All right, we're back to stepper motors. Um, this is another variation of what I used in my coil winder stepper motor video. If you saw that, you recognize this control board and this display. This is actually a spare of the motor used in that project. We're going to concentrate on stepper motor basics. As where the next video, I'll go into software and how to further expand the programming of these switches. As we remember, if you watch the display, watch your stepper motor to your right. Let's go ahead and start it. And of course, I can speed control it with this potentiometer. I can slow it down to a crawl. Or speed it right up. If you can see the counting on the display. All right, let's discuss, oh, by the way, this is a brand new board I built today. It uses a completely different switching technology from the old one. But first, I want to discuss some basic wiring on these stepper motors. This is just a basic drawing. If you can see the dot, and you notice the wires off to the side on the stepper motor, that's the green-white wire. That's the green wire. And this is the white wire. This is your center tap. Most of you are used to wiring these things up where you connect the center wire to the plus voltage. In this case, I connected the center wires to the center taps to ground. The resistance from green to green-white is 20 ohms. Thus, from the center tap to green is 10 ohms. From the center tap to green-white is 10 ohms. On the other side, we have red. We have a black center tap. And then we have a red-white. Same deal from red to red white is 20 ohms. Between center tap to red white, 10 ohms. From black to red, 10 ohms. That's how the motor is constructed. Let's look at let's look under the motor itself. Looking at the bottom of the stepper motor you'll find out that it's 5.1 volt per phase and it has and it's rated at 1 amp and it's 1.8 degrees per step to go 360 degrees you divide 1.8 into 360 and it comes out to 200 steps to go 360 degrees the electronics and the controller board from the original coil winder this is the exact board nothing has been changed on it you can still program in however how many turns you want press the switch and off goes the motor and you can control the time between steps to control the motor all right Let's look a little closer at another drawing. Let's pay attention to this driver circuit. That's a TIP-125. It's actually a PNP Darlington. Those are what's on the heat sink. On the other board, we will be looking at momentarily. Here is the internal transistor in a ULN-2003 transistor array. 
the voltage from the control board goes in, switches on this transistor, creates a current path through the emitter, through the base, through the 4.7K to ground. It switches the 5 volts down here to the collector on the appropriate motor coil. If you look over here on the motor coils, again, if, if you look close enough, the center taps are grounded and the ends go to a circuit like this. Let's look closer at the new motor board. This is the new motor board. It consists of four PNP Darlingtons. Here's your connector coming in from the control board. There's four inputs plus a ground. This is a ULN 2003 transistor array. And here's your motor connections, like I said in the early drawings. There's a black, red, white, and red. There's your white, green, and green, white. The center taps, where the, where the white and the green are, go to ground. As opposed to your usual designs, where you connect the center taps to VCC and then switch the windings to ground, I'm doing it backwards here. That's because all I had was some PNP Darlingtons, and that's why I redesigned. I wanted to try a different switching technique, which I think in many ways works better, because you keep these windings mostly towards ground, and, and it seems to reduce noise somewhat, at least on my oscilloscope. Also behind here, you might be able to see it. These are some spike suppressor diodes. And these are four LEDs. Now I have not powered up as such. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to the board. I'm going to bring this down a bit. See if you can notice the board. Let's get them a little closer together. Well, let's just zoom in on the LEDs, because there's a point why I stuck these LEDs in here, besides telling me if I wired something up wrong. Remember, remember for instance, uh, the motor was rated at 5 volts at 1 amp. Okay, I am switching in 5 volts. I lose about a half a volt in the switching transistor, so it's really about 4.5, 4.5. 4.6, but that's not the point. Remember, each winding from center tap to the end of the windings is 10 ohms each for 20 ohms total. So even if you was to connect the winding directly to 5 volts and leave it there, 5 volts divided by 10 ohms is a half an amp. But you're sitting here thinking, now wait a minute, that's rated at 1 amp, and I'm dividing 5 volts by 10 and can get, and, and I'm only getting a half an amp. No, this is what you're dealing with. Let's power it up and watch. Watch your LEDs real closely. What do you see? no more than two of the windings and one remember this is one this is one center tap windings inputs that's the other center tap windings inputs you notice that at any one time only two that is one half of each center tap winding is turned on and no more than two at a time half an amp plus half an amp is what one amp Again, look at the pattern. I'll try to slow it down as much as I can. You notice you never see these two LEDs on at the same time. You never see these two on at the same time. But the relationship of which one is on to each other determines whether your motor is going. And of course, the steps, uh, the delay between the steps will determine the speed of the motor. Let's focus on something a little different now. 
I'm going to back this off just a bit. Notice my windings here. What would I have to do to make the motor go in a different direction? All I have to do, now note right here, back there, there's your red winding, there's your black winding, there's your white and red winding. All I have to do, leave everything else the same, same programming, everything, is swap two of those wires, either that pair or that pair, leave the center taps alone, and you will reverse the direction of the motor. Let me stop it, swap the wires, and we'll take a look. Note what direction is it going in now. It is going clockwise. I'm going to swap the red wire with the red and white wire. Alright, I'm back. If you notice here, I swapped the red and I swapped the white and red. Let's go ahead and start it and see which direction the motor goes. And there it goes counterclockwise. So if you build this thing, if you build one of these things and it's going in the wrong direction than what you expected, just take two of the wires on one of the phases and reverse them. And you will change the direction. That's all you got to do. You don't have to change the software or how it works or anything else. And so this is a view of this new board design. I will put the schematic up in the next day or so, but this works identically with the old coil winder drive schematic. Works exactly the same way. It's just it's wired up differently on this end. Next time we're going in the future, next time we're going to start looking at the programming and how once you get this motor going I'll show you how the software works and we'll figure out how to put a brake in it or how to shut it down from the two from the other switches that is you might need to halt it for some reason your wire gets tangled you might have to hit it real quick untangle the wire and then hit hit it and continue from where you were we'll program that into the system or you might need to just get out of it totally. We'll also program that into the system and do more than just set the number of turns. Until next time, keep building stuff.